The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a very comforting spiritual principle which I think exemplifies the story of St. Matthew, the great saint we remember today. So remember who St. Matthew is. He's a tax collector. I know that doesn't mean much for us as 21st century Americans, but hear it with the words of a first century Jew. Tax collectors were traitors. And as we all know, traitors are one of the most loathsome people. In fact, Dante in his Divine Comedy, he places traitors in the lowest reaches of hell. Because imagine somebody that you love who betrays you. We, we know that pain well. So Matthew is a tax collector, which means he's colluding with their fiercest enemy, Rome. He's betrayed his own people. Not only that, but tax collectors were known for stealing. They're greedy. And yet it is this sinner, this tax collector, which Jesus will use to write the gospel of Matthew. Him, with that moment where Jesus looks at him. Imagine this, this moment. It would have been a pivotal moment. Jesus who comes to the custom post, Matthew, in the middle of his, of his, of his sin. Working with Rome. And he goes up to him and he says, You sinner, follow me. And here is a spiritual principle I want to lay out. God wants to use us. And he has factored in our stupidity. Hear that again. God wants to use every single one of us. Why? I don't know. God wants to use us for some reason to build up his kingdom. And he has factored in our mistakes for his greater glory. Because here is the rationale why I call it a very comforting spiritual principle. Because every single one of us here has made mistakes in our lives. We've committed shameful things that we don't want to talk about. And the fact that we hide, and rightfully so, because they've hurt people, we've made horrible decisions and with, with long-lasting consequences. We've made many, many mistakes. And it is precisely those sins, those mistakes, those shameful decisions that we'd rather take away that God can use. Matthew is the perfect example. A traitor, greedy, and it's precisely him that Jesus will use. So for all of you, all of us who have made mistakes, part of our prayer life, bring it before God. Stop running away from our sins and our mistakes. Bring all of the filth. I'm talking about all of the dirty places in our hearts. Bring all of that. Bring it before God. God, here is my stupidity. <laughs> and use it now.
And remember this Bible verse, by the way. Never forget it, and I'll end here. Romans 8, 28. St. Paul discovered this principle. And St. Paul would beautifully say in Romans 8, 28, it's an easy number to remember, 8, 28. All things work for the greater glory of God for those who love him. Notice that. All things, not just the things that we're good at. Everything, and that includes our silly mistakes. Romans 8, 28.